Hello, my name is Jared Michael Thomas, and um, I'm here in North Little Rock, Arkansas, which is my home. Uh, behind me are several of my family's pecan trees, and so I decided to take the opportunity to teach you all the Steel Mace 360, which is one of the most original, if not the most primary movement that you can perform with a steel mace. Uh, and I figured, why not do that uh, back in my hometown with my very first mace, this 15 pound steel mace that I purchased off of Amazon in 2020, way back in the beginning of my journey with all of these fun tools. Um, and then as another side note, today is actually 20 years from uh, the day that we uh, buried my mother after she passed away on December 21st, 2003. So this video is dedicated to her. All right, so that said, the Steel Mace 360, there's a lot to be said about it. It's an ancient historical movement. The idea of loading weight into the shoulder uh, and pushing off the ground with tall posture to create both a swinging and a combative type of motion um, is nothing new to mankind. However, uh, it is a movement that has largely been lost since the advent of firearms and other tools that allowed us to uh, fight and uh, perform combat from greater distances versus being up close in person. However, that said, there's nothing about pulling a trigger that's going to make you more of a man in consideration of the fact that we have the physiology naturally to utilize tools like a steel mace to not only be very strong uh, to correct our posture and to build a holistic type of strength but also to protect and defend ourselves and our loved ones if need be. Um, in either case, uh, this is a type of movement that I think um, would benefit everybody to have uh, uh, familiarity with. And so that said, um, I'm excited to take a moment here to teach you all about the Steel Mace 360. So that said, like any movement that you're going to learn, it is better, far better to learn it with a weight that you can properly uh, utilize and move with. So don't worry about using a 25, 20, or even a 15 pound mace. My recommendation is to use a 10 pound mace. If you have a 15, uh, this is the tool that I learned with in the beginning. So for some of you, it may be totally fine. Uh, but for most, a 10 pound mace will be perfectly fine. And as you learn more movements over time, you're going to figure out how to begin developing those skills. And you're gonna do so with that lighter weight, okay? So the Steel Mace 360, all right? The 360, is a movement whereby the mace is going to start in what is called order position. It's an order because the globe, while being so much further away from my hands and being high up above me, is straight and tall and I'm able to hold it properly in this nice, strong, sturdy position. Even though it's putting a lot of weight on my core, compressing me down, I have a great amount of control here, even if I give it a little bit of flexion to the left and right. In fact, this is what I'm going to recommend that you start doing once you have structurally sound order position right up here up top, okay? So give yourselves and your wrists a little bit of flexion left and right, not too much. The goal here is to observe the limitations of your wrists and understand that there's only so far you can go before that weight gets too far for you to hold out right, all right? From here, I want you to take in fact, actually, take your top hand and point with your top finger. Now, this is not a forever rule. It's not something you have to do forever and ever and ever, but to begin, there's a lot of good reasons to start this way, all right? And so pointing your top finger with your top hand is gonna show us the direction we want our globe to go. In this case, my right hand is on top, so I'm gonna take my index finger and point across, and that's the direction our globe is going to go when we perform this 360. Now, what I'm gonna do to start with, before I do this, I'm going to take my shoulder that I'm pointing to, and I'm going to pull it forward and let the mace rest on it. All right. From here, I'm going to use my shoulder as a natural lever, staying tall with my posture, which will be key and paramount throughout this movement. 
I'm gonna let the globe drop over my shoulder as my tail comes up. And as soon as it clears my head, I'm going to drop it down. Okay, I'm gonna turn around here for a second. I would like you to notice how far my wrists are down while my elbows are up. Okay, my wrists go down, my elbows go up, and I maintain tall posture while I focus here exclusively on my wrists and my forearms. The only thing I wanna have here in terms of tension is simply a good grip, that's it. And I'm gonna use my wrists and my forearms to get the mace high into the sides, like this. And the last movement is where my elbows are going to come down and hit my hips. So once the globe gets up to my shoulders, I'm going to pull down just like that. It is certainly that part of town as well, as you can hear the sirens. So the Steel Mace 360 is comprised of that order position up top, beginning to let the mace cast off, we're going to let it drop and hit the depth of the swing behind us, at which point the momentum will carry the globe up to our shoulder height, and we can then take our elbows and tuck them into our hips, okay? So, so far, we've talked about order position, nice and tall, pulling our shoulder over, using it as a nice lever, let the globe drop behind you where your wrists will drop down, getting our pendulum swings going in the back. All right. And then once the globe hits our shoulder height, taking our elbows and pulling them straight down, using that momentum, which is going to have the globe come straight back up. All right. So the last part is how do we perform that drop in order to get it into the swing? And this is going to be the most difficult part. Okay. So like before, we were testing out the limitations of our wrists, going left and right. And roughly what you're gonna notice is for both, for pretty much everybody, the mace is gonna hit about a 45 degree angle or less before it puts too much pressure on your wrists to hold. It is at this point where you want to begin lifting the mace up with your hands and pushing it up, which is going to begin having the globe cast out at that 45 degree angle. In truth, your hands are not going to go way out here. They're going to stay relatively square on this line right here in line with your chest. So when your hands, instead of going out and away from the, your center of body and your center of mass, you're simply going to basically angle your, your hands out with that 45 degree angle. And as you're pushing the globe up, your hands are going to go straight over your head. And at that point, you're going to surrender to the weight of the drop. And that's when it's going to hit that point of momentum, carrying it through, at which point once it hits the opposite side, taking your elbows and pulling them directly straight down to your hips. Once your elbows hit, hit the hips, the globe will be nice, straight, and upright, and you will have completed 360. Okay, I'm gonna show you. So going back to our order position, doing our little metronome here, noting that we have certain limitations with our wrists. I'm gonna point with my top hand. My index finger is going to indicate that the globe is going to go to my left. For those of you watching, it'll be your right. And once it about hits this 45 degree angle, my hands, watch, will go straight up over my head and I'm going to surrender. I'm gonna let that globe drop down but when my hands go over my head it's going to drop right into that swing now this is easier said than done if you would like to start with it on your shoulder you can but the whole key to what we're doing and we want to be mindful is our posture in the beginning when people do this movement they're oftentimes waiting too far and they're getting herky-jerky and doing this kind of mess and it's going to lead to injury and issues that we don't want all right so we need to make sure we have tall posture. So you gotta promise me that if you let your shoulder come forward and you rest it here, that you're going to then return back to this nice square flat position. Because people like to turn their backs and that's really not what we wanna do. But 
you can start here to get that angle and your hands essentially can come straight up over your head. Now you can also rest it on the opposite side. Hands up and then drop. But truth be told, a standard 360 is simply having those elbows tucked in nice and tight to your hips, letting the mace cast off that 45, pushing up with, with, with what is also considered a block, blocking, and then surrendering to that drop. There's a lot of moving parts. This is possibly one of the most dynamic movements that a human can perform with any tool that's not already a part of the body. But this tool, in its nature of being 100% offset, is physiologically essentially engineered for human swing potential. All right. So we let that globe cast off. I'm gonna keep my shoulders flat. I'm gonna be tall, I'm looking straight at you. I'm gonna block up, let that globe drop, and I'm gonna pull my elbows into my hips. I'm gonna hit that swing, and then the elbows right when it hits up in that tall position, boom, right to my hips. The 360 is a beautiful movement, and when you first start doing it, you will recognize that just a few reps will be very, very taxing. But before long, you'll be able to create a lot of variety into it. You'll be able to begin stepping and pushing, swinging off the ground to create more swing potential. You'll be able to use just one arm. You'll be able to switch into 10 and twos, which clocks at 10 o'clock and two o'clock. And create all kinds of variations of swings that you can begin utilizing to then develop more and more skill. But the 360 is the primary movement. I would like to also note that my hands are nice and low. My hands are actually right about my, just south of my navel, right about my waistline. And the lower they are, the more control I have over the globe, despite its tall position. So, this was a brief but succinct, I hope, tutorial on how to perform a Steel Mace 360. Again, my name is Jared Michael Thomas, here in North Little Rock, Arkansas, my hometown, in front of my family's pecan orchard, which I spent a lot of time earlier picking many of them. I hope you have a good time testing these 360s and practicing them. And if you have any questions or thoughts, put them below in the comments. Thank you, guys.